it's pretty hot <laughs> hello everyone hope you're all doing well look um during the past long while i guess i start all my videos with this during the past while <laughs> we've been focused on understanding a better understanding of the movement of our psyche and to go deeper in understanding intrusive thoughts ocd thoughts the um, why they show up and why they linger why they mean what makes them to be so annoying and why is it that our brain somehow gets fooled and duped into thinking that these intrusive thoughts of any sort whether it's a regular ocd obsession and compulsion of washing your hands 100 million times or <laughs> checking the stove or it's a pedophile OCD, religious OCD, responsibility OCD, homosexual OCD, harm OCD, any kind of OCD, any kind of intrusive thoughts. We've tried to help ourselves to understand how meaningless and irrelevant any type of intrusive thought is by understanding the function and malfunction and the system and movement and behavior of the apparatus of the brain. We've done that. And specifically, I have two very <laughs> well done, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I gotta blow my own horn, I guess. Uh, <laughs> prompt the channel, uh, two playlists intrusive transient OCD HOCD negative thoughts which discusses the interpretation of the thoughts and suggestions and the images and meaning of them these sort of thing data hunting and discussions and the feelings the meaning of all these things which shows up in the brain and um, you know that's one of the uh, ways that uh, distracts you, confuses you, makes you think that any of these feelings or thoughts or suggestions or images mean anything. So in that playlist, we've discussed uh, and explored the meaning of all this, the association of these suggestions and images and thoughts to sex, to homosexuality, to heterosexuality, to the whole concept of sex and how it plays into the brain and so on and so forth. But then we have another playlist and that it is more of a strength and power behind the whole discussions that we have to bring about your attention to the irrelevancy of all these intrusive thoughts, the meaninglessness of all these intrusive thoughts, and how you should understand to deal with it and not be bamboozled by thinking that any of these intrusive thoughts have any actuality or could have any actuality to them just because they showed up and popped up. We've discussed that part of the understanding and exploration of the movement and behavior of the brain, thoughts and you and the relationship between brain, thoughts and you. And the whole premise and the whole focus has been to follow the understanding that has been proven through scientific experiments, um, psychotherapists, uh, expertise and um, studies and clinical psychologists, presentations, and many other scientists who have uh, through scientific work proven that you're not the brain. Brain is not you. You're not thoughts and thoughts are not you. Plus the scholars that through non-medical means and discussions and explorations from hundreds of years ago they have discussed and introduced to us the movement of mind and the relationship again between thoughts consciousness fear desire ego and the role of the brain and what is thought what is consciousness and the brain thoughts and you and all of that collectively medically and non-medically discussions and explorations have proven that you're not the brain, brain is not you, you're not thoughts and thoughts are not you. None of these intrusive thoughts mean anything. They're all meaningless. They're all irrelevant and you should always remember that. So we've done that. And in the description of all those videos in those two playlists that I mentioned, you have the name and the links of the experts in the field of neuroscience of habits and OCD, such as Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Philipson's, Dr. Jan Weiner, 
and Dr. Owens, many other scientists that have done specific work, special work, and in one of the presentations of Dr. Schwartz, there's a beautiful experiment, very meaningful, by Dr. Grable, I believe, that's her name, and uh, one of her MIT postgraduate students who've done a elaborate experiment with rats in the laboratory and discuss the involvement of parts of the brain in OCD and um, neuroscience of habits and it's very interesting it's available the link is a bit available in one of, in many of my all my uh, videos in those playlists and I have used that discussion and presentation of Dr. Schwartz about that experiment in my uh, segments that I have put together which is um, I've used the scientific experiments as, as described by those experts in their presentations in my presentation which involved in the non-medicinal, non-medical experiments and explorations of movement of mind and understanding the relationship between thoughts and consciousness and uh, what the brain does and the movement and so on and so forth. So we've done that. We have all that. For the people who are interested to understand what this whole OCD, what this whole HOCD, what this whole nonsense that bamboozles them and makes a heterosexual think that they're turning gay or they're changing gender and all these things that comes to mind as a form of thoughts and tonight I want to discuss with you something that is very obvious and not so deep medical or non-medical exploration something that everyone can easily see and perhaps that would be in addition to the arsenal that you have in order to understand and how meaningless and irrelevant this whole intrusive thoughts are and how they get the hold of becoming and taking our attention and our focus and distract us from our daily lives. So here it is. Look, you've seen this whole um, expression that says repetition doesn't make it right. Meaning, if someone constantly repeats something that is wrong, that's not going to make that wrong thing to suddenly be the truth or be right. But they use that technique in many different fields. Politicians use it, accuse each other of something, constantly say, Look, you said that you're going to cut those taxes in that amount on this way. And the other one says, no, I never said that. So you raise taxes in that way. And he says, no, I never said that. But they keep saying you did and says, I don't, you did. And, you, and they keep advertising on it. Maybe some voters will actually believe the untrue to be true through suggestion, continuous suggestion, and working on turning the attention of the brain to treat that lie or that untruthful, baseless thing as facts, as true. Because they count on the fact that if you constantly repeat something that eventually you know it may form itself in the brain as if it is factual that's why you see most politicians the crook kind constantly continuously repeat a lie in order to change the structural belief of that particular topic in your mind and change your understanding what the facts are what is not and bamboozle you and you experience it in your own life that somebody says oh you said that so no I never said no you said that and every time they see you they say oh you remember you said that you did that you constantly say no I didn't but they are trying to create doubt and confusions to get it work brain does the same thing in the outside world in your regular life you're quite stewed and quite smart in not falling victim to this exercise that they try to make you believe something that is not true and you're wise to that and you don't listen to it and constantly a million times they repeat it a million times you tell them nonsense and I don't believe it they accuse you oh you stole that thing remember you cheated there so, no I didn't know especially if you're playing a game <laughs> tennis or something oh it was a foul oh you did that oh, you went out you didn't say no it wasn't out it was in these are all <laughs> part of trying to turn a, something into their favor by constantly repeating. But you don't fall for that. In the outside world, you're very wise to that. And a million times repeat of something doesn't change your mind and you're focused on what the facts are. 
But when the brain does that to you, which is exactly the same thing, it is using the same principles of continuous repetition, hoping that, or whatever its intention is, its intention is not really hoping to bamboozle you, but its function is to protect you and it happens to turn out to be intrusive thoughts when, again, we discuss carded nucleus is malfunctioning, constantly loops in there and stays in there, and this becomes a repetition of suggestion or images or thoughts that is appearing in your head, and this repetition is no different than the repetition of the lies that is being given and, and uttered outside in the society in life, and you don't fall for it. But when there's a constant repetition of intrusive thoughts of all kinds, any kind of OCD, any kind of uh, intrusive thoughts, uh, pedophile intrusive thoughts, uh, religious intrusive thoughts, uh, sexual intrusive thoughts, the repetition of it by the brain, you believe it. How come repetition doesn't make it right is the motto that we go out, we go by outside of our heads in the society, how we deal with them. Doesn't matter how many times something wrong is said, that many times we refuse it and refute it and we don't accept it. But how come when it's done by the brain itself, you fall for it? And after many intrusive thoughts constantly linger around, again because part of the midbrain is not uh, functioning well and it's malfunctioning in the signaling system, as we said, call it nucleus, to name the main part of it, but you believe it. Even though you know the science says, this is why this loop, this suggestion, this image, this th thought constantly is looping your head and staying in your head and doesn't go away is because carded nucleus is malfunctioning, the signals doesn't get through, and orbital prefrontal cortex keeps sending it back for processing, it's constantly looping in process, that's why it's hanging on and keeps showing up in your head, even though you know that scientific explanation for it, and you know that repeating something wrong doesn't make it right, as you practice outside in your life, but when something repeats in your head, you start believing it. Why? 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 Why do you fall for what's being repeated, image, suggestions, thoughts, by your brain through thoughts? Because it's repeated, then you doubt that A, what I knew of myself all the time, all my life, I should doubt it now because this is constantly showing up in my head. Why do you now get confused and doubt who you are, what you are, what you've always been, and always been happy to be that what you've always been? You've been a heterosexual, you've loved it, you've always enjoyed it, that was your life. But then because the intrusive thoughts due to the malfunction of the brain, OCD and whatnot, keeps happening, suggesting to you that you're gay, or you're turning gay, which as if it's possible to turn from one gender to another, or any other suggestion that he keeps bringing it up, and you believe it. Why? Why do you, at one part of your life, clearly know that repeating repetition of something wrong doesn't make anything happen to come true or be right or to become right by repetition of it. But when the brain does the same nonsense, the same activity, suddenly you find uh, that untrue statement and suggestions and images and uninteresting and uninvited uh, thoughts possibly credible. And you get annoyed and bamboozled and start believing it. But when it's happening out there, by any means, you won't accept it because you're wise to it. What happened to the wisdom from outside and inside? What's the difference? With the other brains suggested, you refute it and you stand your ground. But when this brain suggested, you think, oh, it's credible. What's the difference between the credibility and non-credibility of this brain and those brains? Brains are all, could be saying things that have nothing to do with you. Neither those brains belonging to other people out there 
is you or represents you, or their thoughts, you or represent you, neither your own brain's thoughts represents you and have a truth about you or knows anything more about you than you know. Neither their brain is you nor your own brain is you. But when your brain repeats something, you believe it. Yet when other brains be, uh, repeat something about you, you're very strong and very clear and you don't give a shit about it, which is the way to go. Why? Hmm? Well, you ask yourself that answer that yourself. I'm sure you can do that because there's no explanation for it other than the fact that you just somehow have been duped into thinking that what brain, your brain does is you. You follow the brain you think instead of thinking that you choose and select the production of the brain and suggestions and the images that it creates and produces in the form of thought in the screen of the head. You select it. You're the boss. You're above brain. Brain works for you. These are the things that you should be focusing that you don't. And the other thing is that somehow we have lost the understanding that the brain is a tool, is an apparatus, is an equipment that we have employed, somehow bought, added, mounted on our body to serve us in a certain capacity so we could use it to better our lives and advance our lives and use it for learning, calculating something, figuring out something, designing something, producing something, accomplishing something, solving some things that we want to figure out. That's what we have added this brain, function of it, functionality, this capability of this equipment to our being. Like we have, you know, somehow nature, universe has given us kidney, liver, they all have functions. And the brain also is given to us in the way it is today, just 40,000 years ago. Before that, we were surviving and thriving perfectly. We didn't need all this thinking and speaking and all that. And we were just like any other animal. Everything was clear. Our sexuality was clear. There was no questions and doubts and intrusive thoughts. And none of that shit was there before we were given the capability of thinking and speaking. Because... It's just a suggestion. Speaking and thinking capability brought about the side effect of thoughts created and these um, thinking and speaking and words and meaning of the words and conclusions. All these became part of the intrusive function of the, of the brain. It became part of the things that we never had to deal with because it's not part of our biology, these intrusive suggestions or images and so on. That doesn't describe us the way we have always been, the way we have been born. Whatever your sexuality is, it was decided when you were being created in the womb of your mother and you were born as such. That's not going to change. And before we were given the ability of thinking and speaking 40,000 years ago, that never was a question of any kind. Everything was clear. Whoever sexuality was, whatever it was, it was clear. There was no question or intrusive thoughts about it. All these intrusive thoughts happened when we were given the capability of thinking, which was 40,000 years ago. But before that, we were living for a million years, like any other animal. Sleep, hunt, have sex. Our sexuality was clear. There was no doubt. Everything was hardwired. Now it's like Wi-Fi and there is interference in all these connections and there is a, a corruption in the data that is being transferred so it bamboozles you and makes you doubt the reality of you. You've been born as a heterosexual, always been a heterosexual, always loved girls and so you lived as the way you lived. There was no problem. But then the thought creates this and you fall for it. Why? Yes, we talked about the fact that it was hardwired before there was no ability of thinking and um, speaking so that we had no problem. But even in Wi-Fi, why don't we consider the fact that it's just a malfunction and repeating something that is 
makes no sense because thought had nothing to do with selecting or creating our gender when we were being created in the womb of our mother. So thought can never, any suggestion, images, thoughts can never have any role in any modification or changing whatsoever, any kind of our gender. So why is it that you entertain it? As because it's coming from the brain, as if it has a certain credibility. Why would brain have any credibility? It doesn't, right? We didn't need it to, for survival up to 40, 50,000 years ago. So what happened? Why is it that what shows up in the screen of your head has such credibility that, in fact, 80, 90,000 different thoughts a day is created by your brain and none of them are credible at all and you don't even give a damn about any of them. You're just busy doing your own thing. But these particular things, which is about something that is very important to you, your sexuality, you identify yourself in the world, your place in the world based on your sexuality and that's the one you protect the most. So if something comes up which is contrary to what it is that you are, you always try to protect it, you always pay attention to it and if it's intrusive and n negative to what you know about yourself, what you have always been, then you become concerned and then distracted and so on and so forth as if has any credibility. Well, beside the fact that we are just not that smart human beings and we get so easily distracted or fooled or gullible when it comes to behavior of the brain. I mean, even somebody out there can, can fool you and trick you into buying something that you don't need or you pay a lot more money than something that is worth or just simply trick you by giving them some money or something and get nothing and thinking that uh, that's a legitimate deal. So there are cheaters out there. The brain as though it doesn't need that much an effort and elaboration, it just suggests something and you believe it. What the hell for? What gives credibility to the brain? Hmm? Well, how about this? If you notice since childhood, we have been counting on the brain for doing lots of calculations and functions, and it's been used to help us guide, have a guidance, and it's like a guiding mechanism and does lots of things for us. You know, we use it to imagine things, we use it to solve things, we use it to learn things, we use it to design things, we use it to fix things. So we have kind of built a certain kind of a trust on the quality of the information that it spills out when we request it. But we've forgotten that often when we request it, okay, we use it properly and we get some information that we want based on what we initiated that thinking or that process of information hunting to be. But brain on its own does its own thing too. It's not just we using the brain apparatus to do stuff for advancement of our life on a daily basis. The brain itself also is producing 80, 90,000 thoughts a day that you're oblivious to it and you had never had anything to do with requesting such images or suggestions or thoughts to be produced by the brain, but the brain does that continuously. So brain does its own production that you should be aware that what it produces, it doesn't mean you requested it or you had anything to do with it. That's one part of the credibility they should take away from it because you automatically think that it has something to do with you. You must be involved in that equation, in that thought process or in that uh, imaging or in that suggestion that the brain has made. No, you're not. It's very clear. You're not. You've got nothing to do with it. The other thing is that almost everything since we were born, we've been conditioned to understand or we miss to understand that one of the reasons that we give certain kind of credibility to the brain or we believe in it, we've been led to believe in it, is because our experiences in life is second-handed. Like the eyes are given to us for us to track something and follow its data and recognize it by pictorials. It, it, it gives us the view of the outside so we can navigate. But what we see is actually coming to our brain and the brain puts it on the screen of the head that we see. We think it's out there, but in fact it's a reflection of what's out there. It comes in, it's processed, and then we see it. 
So in fact, we think that everything is happening from inside our brain, that we think the, the world out there is actually, we see it through the window of our head, of our brain. So we don't have a direct connection with life, with the outside world. What we hear is first coming to our head and then is processed, then it is presented to us for our uses, however that use may be. If you look at pretty much anything that we have to do with the outside world, it's not necessarily in all cases directly connected to us. It is connected to us through having gone through the apparatus that we have, eyes, ears, senses, so on, through the brain processed and from the inside the brain we're informed about that information or that whatever it is. So somehow we think that the credibility of the world is from inside of our brain. That's how we have gained credibility towards our brain because we've been seeing the world uh, through the eyes of the brain, through the processes that the brain does. Eyes bring information, bring processes as we understand it. Ears bring music and sound and everything, processes we understand. The words, they each have a pictorial and pictures. They each have words and thoughts behind them. We, these processes and interchanges uh, of these information is happening inside the brain. And through that, after it's been, you know, you see a picture, you see an image, you see a scenery, the eyes takes it, processes it. Then there's a word that the brain has learned and through languages is, uh, is attached to that scenery and the details of that scenery and then the, each of those words have a meaning and those words with their meanings create a certain emotion. So in other words, everything is second-handed. You don't simply see it and then feel it. It goes and processes and you perceive it and so on and so forth. And often many things that you see out there is not directly you're observing it. It comes to your brain. It's processed based on the experiences you had in the past and the information and the images of the same thing you have in your consciousness. And you perceive that thing that is in front of you in reality and actuality, but you actually perceive it based on the experiences you have of, of the similar thing in your consciousness from the past memory. So again, everything seems to be second-handed and even not real time, even though you're in front of that situation, you think you're involved with the actuality of that thing, but your decisions, many of them could be coming based on the perception of that, whatever it is you're observing, and you're not really one with it, but you are taking some other information from a similar ex experience in the past of that tree, and you see the tree, you're in front of the tree, but you really are actually bringing the information from a experience or perception of a tree you had, maybe similar tree last year somewhere. So you're making your judgment based on what this tree is, what it can do, what it cannot do, what it's good for, what it's not good. Not based on what you're actually seeing it right there in front of you in that moment, but based on that information that has been recorded in your consciousness based on uh, some other time in the past. So you're perceiving the reality. So you're really not in, in, in contact with the actuality of life. You are actually one step behind. And maybe, I don't know, a week from now, you will be having similar experience with this, I don't know, object or tree or whatever, ocean. And then you would be using what you saw today <laughs> and uh, perceiving what you will see two weeks from now based on what you saw today. And then again, you're using the past information rather than that information that is right in front of you in actuality. So this is how you become to think that the brain is where the reality is, which is totally false. Brain has no reality. Everything about the brain and what it does, the information it gives you is all the past. And all perceptions and intrusive thoughts. So how are you going to figure out which is which if you're not alert and aware about the movement of the brain, the function of the brain, the malfunction of the brain, the nature of the thoughts and how it's put together and the nature of 
uh, and the motivation of intrusive thoughts where it comes from and you understand that it's got none of them have anything to do with you it's the brain that creates the intrusive thoughts based on the malfunctions in the signaling system and based on the fact that it conjures up thoughts in order to protect you and often it goes haywire and goes rogue and creates all kinds of things and you thinking that whatever the brain produces it has the same credibility as if you are using the apparatus of the brain which is consciously you're picking up some material from the consciousness and using that inventory to make thoughts with it for the purpose of calculating something figuring out something designing something learning something producing something accomplishing something you have to give distinguish you have to be able to distinguish between the thoughts that you purposely use information in the consciousness to create those thoughts for advancement of your purposes and the thoughts that are being created 24 7 by the brain and you're oblivious to it if you can't do that then you'll be fall victim to all the intrusive thoughts and you think they have the same credibility as when you are using the brain to create thoughts that's why you believe the bullshit of the intrusive thoughts that could have all kinds of scopes and all kinds of uh, intentions and uh, meanings or whatnot which is all irrelevant to you sexual non-sexual and so on and so forth i mean brain does i don't know what is it 60 trillion processes pieces of process uh, in a second if i'm not mistaken that's actually a statistic that they've calculated that the brain is far more capable of your uh, laptop computers or your desktop computers abilities to do processing thousands and thousands of times faster hmm? so it's capable of doing all these processes yet it is not capable to notice a difference tell the difference between actuality and virtuality to the brain it has no understanding cannot tell the difference between what's real in actuality and what's just a thought it thinks both are the same so it functions the same it reacts the same it guides you the same so it's the source of disaster if the, the if the, if you don't understand the the brain and its malfunctions and its shortcomings because you would treat the guidance of the brain based on the actuality of life which you, the you, the me that is in there is relinquished, is controlled to the brain thinking that the brain is the leader and you are follower yet you are the selector, you are the judge, you are the wise, you are the awareness and the brain is a tool for this awareness of you. You have to understand that. Brain is not setting the course for you. It's a it's a gauge, it's a tool, it's some kind of a compass that you could use, but the compass itself could malfunction and it goes way weirdo. Yeah? You gotta be aware of it, that it's a tool, it's an equipment. It can go wrong, it can go malfunctioning. But you don't. You think the brain is beyond mistakes, beyond malfunction, and whatever the shit happens in there, you believe it to the point. That if it suggests that you're turning gay or you're becoming homosexual or you have been living in denial, you believe it. And since it continues and loops in there, you suddenly think, oh, repeating the wrong thing, that makes it right. Well, that's not how you function out there. If somebody constantly says something that is not true to you, how many million times they say, how many million times you refute it and said, you say, no, I don't believe that and you stand your ground but when it comes from the brain suddenly so you have to be aware of these that the brain is not capable of making decisions for you the way you would have made it because you are the complete personality and persona and the system brain is the equipment of this whole setup structure entity you got to take all that credit that you've given to the brain. You know, most people really, as, as important as the brain is to our life, we don't deny it. But when you, when, if they ask you which one is more important, brain or your kidney, 
You say brain. Brain or the heart. You get stuck. How come? Weren't you thinking the brain is everything? Without the brain you can't survive? But I have news for you. Without thought, <laughs> you can survive because you did 40,000 years ago. But without you, thought cannot be present, cannot survive. So you're the main course, you're the center. And all these other capabilities and features are added to you. You need the kidney to do certain thing. You need the liver to do certain thing. You need the brain to do certain thing. Huh? So if anything, I'd say heart is the most important thing. While I understand the importance of the brain because of the way we have evolved right now, we need that in order to make all these decisions and synchronization. And it has, it has so many millions and millions of function every second. All the regulations of the blood flow and the nutrition and where to go, where not to go, and all the capillaries, all the information, all the... Everything is orchestrated by the intelligence that has given the mandate to different parts of our body in order to do their, their functions properly so we can survive. And the brain has got billions of those functions responsible for all that. But still, it's not you to think that if it suggests to you that you're a pedophile, then suddenly you are. It's a suggestion, Victoria thought that it comes in, loops in because of the malfunction that is happening. And then that's all there is. You're not supposed to fall for it. The same thing with any other intrusive thoughts on OCDs. So look at the OCDs that we all are tangled with it at one time or another in our lives. It's got no meanings, but we believe the fact that if I don't wash my hands five times, maybe my mother dies. Why? Because the brain believes it. Fuck the brain. It obviously, it's crazy. But we don't say it crazy. No. Why? It is crazy. We all know. We have a little craziness in ourselves. We checked the stove five million times. We checked the lock. Did I lock it? Yes, you did. Wash your hands with me. Or maybe even my child dies, my son dies, my father dies, or maybe I get sick. Maybe I should just walk over this block of tile on the pavement of the street four times on the four corners of it so uh, something bad wouldn't happen. We're all looking for that security and because it's unattainable to be certain in our life, we create some kind of weird stuff in order to make our brain to believe so it can give us that calmness that, yeah, everything is safe, everything is secure and certain, don't worry. And we kind of do we're pacifying ourselves with the false belief through the brain to the point that the brain actually comes out and says other shit things that you're a pedophile. Oh, now I'm worried about, oh, a thought come to me that I may harm that child or I may, I'm a pedophile. No, you're not. You never, you're the boss. You will never turn it into action. It's a thought by a crazy apparatus, tool, crazy equipment called the brain. It can be used for good stuff when you're using it and you're in command of control of its production and it can go rogue and do shit things when it's when you're not using it and it itself using it and it thinks that it's protecting you by all these intrusive stuff but it's not in reality so you don't fall for it when it suggests to you that you're heterosexual it suggests to you that you're homosexual or that oh you saw that guy and you kiss him kiss him you like it and or some kind of a, a sexual gestures now you can understand this is a brain that has association of five million billion things. It can look at some naked muscle or naked body or someone and then everything is covered with the connotation of sex today. Even a hamburger you see it brings you brings sex into your mind. We as human beings are already programmed to think about sex every five, ten seconds, twenty seconds, depends on how busy you are. Let alone when so much information and Unnecessary information about sex and sexuality is being floating all around the world through all kind of mediums, which it finds its way in the consciousness. And where does the brain get its information and ingredients to make thoughts from? From the consciousness that it, all these irrelevant, unnecessary information about people's lifestyle, people's habits and people's interests that it's got nothing to do with your interests, but they have all found their way into your consciousness. So the brain, a thought manufacturing plant, looks for material to make thoughts, so picks up whatever it's coming into. 
when I was uh, much younger, you know, we were playing um, video games like Mario Kart and and then, you know, um, that they were jumping up to hit their head to the mushroom and get some money and a very healthy game. That's how the consciousness was being conditioned, you know, having safe fun. And that would affect our uh, state of normality and function of the brain and the quality of the thoughts that could be produced involuntarily unbeknown to you by the brain because it picks up the information from the things that have been seeped through to your consciousness. But today, what are we doing? What are we playing? Gory, kill, destroy, destruction, blood, everything. And I'm not saying that it's going to turn you into any bad person by playing these video games, not at all. But what I'm saying is that what we are exposed to as far as information and pictures and so on has a lot to do with the kind of thoughts that the brain on its own is going to go and try to make it because it doesn't know what it is. It just makes thoughts depending on all kinds of information that finds its, finds its way into our consciousness. And in our consciousness right now is filled with an unnecessary information. Whether we saw it in the movies, whether we saw it on the publications, the pictorials, or television programs, discussions. And these discussions could be about anything. Anything that could not relate to you, could not be of any use to you. And to some people it is, to some people it is not. But it is nevertheless unnecessary information that is flooding through our consciousness. And m many of them is about people's personal preferences and sexual preferences and sexual lifestyles and they are information that seep through and the brain picks them up and makes thoughts and many of them are turning into be intrusive thoughts suggestions and constantly loops and if there is any malfunction in there in the form of OCD then it, these loops continuously stay in there and you think repetition makes the wrong thing be true so if it's suggesting to you that you're being a homosexual and it's malfunctioning and it's repeating and it's because all this information seeps through your consciousness and the brain has picked it up and makes thought of intrusive kind in your brain and you start thinking oh it's looping you state that means maybe i'm uh, i'm a homosexual I never knew it or i'm turning gay so you have to realize the one of the reasons for intrusive thoughts beyond other medical things and other things that we discussed is obvious things too much unnecessary information we are being subjected to. Images, publications, information, thoughts, suggestion, all and mostly based on sexual stuff. Man's body is not like how it used to be 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, which was outside of the advertisements and it was not used for selling products women's body was the representations of what marketers and uh, products were being you know uh, marketed through and now so much information about naked parts of the man's body is out there and that itself it becomes part of the information that you distinguish it i'm not interested in that but nevertheless it's part of the pictorials and suggestion information that it gets into the brain and then into this consciousness and the brain picks up that and makes thoughts. What kind of thoughts can it make with the naked body of a man? When we are all constantly programmed for sex, it associates anything naked with sex and then picks up on what is possible to make out of that picture or suggestion and it makes it, regardless of what your gender is. And you're supposed to be thinking, okay, I'm not interested in that, I know that, but why is it constantly there? Because the brain is getting all these information constantly pushed onto its consciousness. It's not like once they showed some kind of a irrelevant uh, sexual suggestions in some movie or something that to you is irrelevant. It's constant. So that sort of a the basis of information is constantly being poured in and the brain constantly picks them up and it's capable of making any kind of thought that possibly can be made because that's the characteristic of the brain, make thoughts. And we talked about the uh, neural ensemble capabilities of the brain to create things that is not even possible in nature, but it can create it. 
because that's one of the specialities of the brain or inventions and design and things and creativity and so on and so forth. So it creates all kinds of weird things that is not even possible for your gender, but it doesn't think about what gender you are. It just thinks that, what thoughts can I make with this? Oh, I can make this, I can make a, I don't know, I can make a car which has a uh, live head or and the engine is alive. It's not really possible, is it? But he can make it. Just imagine right now, a car, put the hood up, and you'll see an engine that is actually, looks like a lion's head. And the teeth of the lion are the cylinders going up and down. You can create all these things, and the rest of the car is just tires and the metal and all that. You can create all kinds of things. You can create a lion with the duck's head which is nature is not possible, but you can create it. These are all called neural ensemble. So these creation are possibilities that brain can do. It's capable. That's why we invent things, design things, and so on, and come up with things that never existed before, advanced. But the brain doesn't understand what it should, what it shouldn't. So it does all kinds of thoughts, produces all kinds of thoughts, as long as it possibly can be created, and it's irrelevant to you. So when it shows up, you shouldn't think, oh, it shows up in my head because it has got something to do with you. No, it's got nothing to do with you. Brain makes thoughts of all kind that is possible to be made. If it's possible, it makes it. It's got nothing to do if you're interested or not. But you don't know that. You think, oh, it showed up. It's a brain. It's got credibility, so it must mean something to me. No, it doesn't mean anything to you. You have to understand all these things. Give me a moment. I'll take a break. I'll be right with you. So, you're not in control of most of these functions. Most of these, I mean, unless you purposely decide to ponder on something, all other thoughts, you're not responsible for them. It's not your doing. It's irrelevant to you. You got to know that. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. Honestly, you will go crazy if you don't understand that the brain that you're carrying in your head is not a machine that is going to be only thinking about your best interests. It does its own shit things. You're supposed to be aware of this so you won't be falling for the products that it creates or the thoughts that it, imaginations that it brings about. And you will select them to know that this is a product of a brain and the brain is not a reliable source. I am the reliable source. I choose what any, if any of these thoughts or images that, and suggestions that are produced of any use to me to what I want to accomplish, only me, my awareness, the me, not the brain. So on that note, then you can see that there is a certain control for you and that is not in the production of the thoughts that you're not responsible for. You are in control only on the reaction to thoughts, suggestions, and images. You're not in control of any of the thoughts, suggestions, or images, but you can be in control of reaction to any of these thoughts, suggestions, or images. Look, if you're in a tennis court, you're not responsible of the, on the tennis ball that is coming to you from the other side of the court. You're not in control of it. It's the other player. Hmm? but you're totally in control of your reaction to that ball that is sent. What are you going to do? Leave it? Let it go out? Leave it? Let it hit inside, the, inside your court? Go after it? Hit it? How are you going to hit it? Forehand? Backhand? How are you going to approach it? Is it? How is it going to be responded to? Your respond to something that you're not in control of is your control is the only way and the only thing that you're con in control of or can be in control of is your reaction to an action. Reaction to a thought. Respond to a suggestion. Respond to an uttering. But you're not responsible to what's been uttered. You're not responsible to what's been thrown at you. Your reactions is your level of control that you can count on. So, 
doesn't matter how many times people out there say something they say eat this shit I don't eat it you know that's it you're in control of your reaction your response to a suggestion but the suggestion just because the suggestion is made doesn't make you the suggestion or in agreement with the suggestion or as the suggestion suggests nothing nothing could be further from the truth you cannot be bothered or change in any shape or form just because a suggestion an image a thought or a uttering opinion of somebody else is made you are in control of respond and reaction to it however so if the brain the same thing with the brain brain suggests you're gay no I'm not you know who you are you know what you've always been and that's the end of it you don't have to debate with it you don't even have to answer it say you're gay move on you don't want to be gay that's all it that matters your decision you're in control of the reaction and respond you're not in control of what's been uttered what message you what thought shows up in the head but you're in control of not accepting it or just letting it be and not responding to it focusing on your life and going away and doing your own thing you are in control of your reaction your responses you don't have to accept whatever somebody passing by a bazaar says fifty dollars for this I don't know tea you don't have to say why fifty dollars no I don't want to fifty dollars why do you have to say this just pass it let's move on pay no attention to it it'll die on its own because there was no response to that ridiculous suggestion of fifty dollars for tea and in your case depending on what gender you are it true for all genders and intrusive thoughts works to you know, come in, in the same way in, to all of them in your case you're heterosexual a suggestion comes in that you're gay or you had a response to that guy that you liked him okay fine or you, that was a you know you got it any kind of a suggestion or thought or respond that comes even from the one that uttered the suggestion like the brain makes a thought and then responds to it itself that's not you either your conscious respond your selected respond your awareness and your alertness your awareness your selected respond purposely by you that's your response that's the one that can turn into action or not now and you're in control of that as long as you're in control of that which you are the actions the responses nothing can threaten you the brain like any other people out there brain is also outside of you and other people are outside of you they can say whatever they want to say you don't accept it you, you choose your own response the brain too suggests anything he wants to suggest means nothing just because it's mounted on the head here it doesn't mean that it's you it's a, a faculty if, if it's a tool that it's uh, malfunctioning so you don't accept its suggestion and you don't simply pay attention to its suggestion you don't focus on its suggestion you just hear it recognize what it is it's intrusive it's gone haywire it's gone into a zone that it's crazy so you recognize that and that's how you treat it you know many of us have uh, some people who are not balanced and um, maybe they are crazy and so if they make a suggestion you hear it but you don't argue with it you just don't comply to it you go on with your own thing right and there are many people that we don't know and they're crazy out there they say some things and it just doesn't make sense it's ridiculous how many suggestions a day can you hear that is stupid what do you do you just pass by the same thing you got to do with your brain as long as you understand that the only thing that is reality really is live is not second-handed is your reactions and you're in control of that so suggestions doesn't make you become the suggestion hearing the suggestion having a suggestion shown up or presented to you 50 million times doesn't make you become the suggestion only you can by accepting it but if somebody keeps telling you well, let's go rob this bank doesn't matter how many times they say it as long as you didn't go and rob the bank you're not a bank robber the suggestions can come and float as all kinds of suggestions are floating 
in the daily life and it seeps into our consciousness every day. But we don't pay attention to them. There are all kind of wrong things are happening in the world, all across the world, in all different facets. We hear them, but we focus on our own life. Same thing, all kind of shit could be considered, could be projected or presented, suggested thoughts, images and whatnot from our brain. But you keep doing your own thing, like all the wrong things that are happening in the world. You don't have to respond to it. It just increases your understanding of how the brain actually is. Well, I gotta watch it, it's a crazy brain, it can go crazy. Everybody's brain can go crazy. And as long as you understand that, and don't treat your brain as a deity, as a you know, most healthy part or logical part or wise. But no, brain is not wise. It's an equipment that makes thoughts, suggestions, images. That's all. It's an equipment. It's like a cinema, a theater. Depending on what kind of movie they put on it, it shows it. It suggests it. It makes it up. It creates things. But you are the selector. You are the one who chooses if it's worthy, if it's useful or not. That you're in control of. So your reactions to thought is what you are in control of. That's the only thing that matters. How you react to a thought is the only determining factor to who you are and have the control of your life and be who you've always wanted to be and be who you've always been and continue loving who you are and enjoying your life the way you like and you prefer and you decide to be who you want to be, what you want to be. So in other words, in all these encounters with all these suggestion thoughts and intrusive thoughts that the brain makes, you should always say, listen, I'm only focusing on what I am. I'm not focusing on what you suggest or you want or you think or whatever it is. Who are you? You're a brain. I am me. I decide what I am, what I prefer, and what I want to be, how I want to be. I and only I. So that's what you do. You only focus on your reactions to thoughts, not the thoughts themselves, and you diss them all. And you only focus on the fact that you are in control of what becomes reality and actuality. Just because a suggestion is made, that doesn't make you the suggestion. So, reaction is where it's all at. And you only focus on what you are. Not what's being said you are, by whomever, however, brain or otherwise. You know what you've been born as, how you like to be, what you have been, what you love to be, and what you prefer to be, that's all. And you act on that. The rest of it is intrusive thoughts, malfunction, let it go crazy. But understand that if you do not understand the malfunctions of the brain and believe the brain, then you end up following the brain. And the brain's got no intelligence, it's gonna take you to crazy house, ditches, places you've never even dreamed of being because that's not your selection, that's in your choices. You are the selector, you are the boss. You make the decisions. Reactions are in your control towards thoughts and do no reactions, focus on your path is the best way. Don't take any of these intrusive thoughts seriously at all. They're irrelevant to you, they're meaningless to you. And simply focus on that I only focus on what I am, not what you're suggesting. And I know more about what I am, how I like to be, what I choose to be in the past, now, and in the future, and only I, not the suggestion or thoughts. I am the boss of the brain, and brain is not me, I'm not the brain. And what brain makes which are thoughts definitely are not me, and I'm not the thoughts. So hence, I'm in control of my life, and intrusive thoughts can go to hell, because I pay no attention to them. That's how you start your journey, and continue your journey, and live your life. I'll talk to you soon.